What's up folks, my name is Brett, and sometimes I wear a beret. And let's talk about dart sweeping, everyone's favorite part of playing with foam darts. Oh boy, I fired them all and now I gotta pick them all up. That's no fun, boo. But it's what makes Nerf Nerf, right? The fact that we can reuse ammo, you should be picking up your darts, but it sucks. No one likes to do it. A lot of people have tried to find ways to make dart sweeping easier. And honestly, some products already exist. If you are at all interested in Nerf Rival, then you've probably heard about the Nut Gatherer, or Garden Weasel is one of the brand names. You can find one of these products for less than $40. Grabbers, or Reachers, Trash Picker Uppers, whatever you want to call them, for like 20 bucks, less than that even. Pick up maybe one or two darts at a time. It's not super fast, but it's, I guess, effective. You could also buy a broom and just sweep stuff. And of course, the tried and true method is your hands. I point that out because some people, when they hear others trying to develop products to make dart sweeping more easy, they say, just deal with it. Get on the ground and pick up darts. Well, some people don't want to. And more importantly, some people can't. We want more people to dart sweep. The better that people can actually sweep, again, the more ammo we get off the ground and the easier it is when more hands are helping. And so Nerf thought this too, definitely. It's been on their mind since the beginning, which is why they came out with Oh, the greatest product of all time, the Nerf Dart Rover. The Dart Rover is pretty fascinating, and while my initial reaction to this was, what the heck, over the years I have found some use cases for it. But its shortcomings have obviously gone on to inspire others to ask the question, can we make a better dart sweeper? And the folks over at Shellington Labs had the exact same idea that there did have to be a better way, or maybe even just a better execution of what the dart sweeper was going for. So behold, I just, I just said the name. This is the Shellington Labs Dart Sweeper. That's the Nerf Dart Rover. I will try my best to not confuse them, but obviously they are very similar. Now I've had this for a couple of months now. I've brought it to a few different games and I have tested it quite extensively. There are some things I like about this and there are some things that I'm not thrilled about. And before we dive in, I feel it's important that I mention to you that I bought this product myself. I paid $80 plus $10 for optional attachments and then the almost $30 in shipping for the Dart Sweeper to arrive to my doorstep. This was not sent to me for review. I ordered it back in November of 2023 and received it in December. So it was about three weeks between when I ordered and when I received the product, which I think is pretty fair. Since that time, I've taken it to multiple events, all of which have been inside, indoors, on either a smooth surface or on a low shag carpet. So I cannot tell you how this works from my experience on a turf-like surface. And I also obviously can't tell you how this works outside. None of these dart sweepers are intended for outdoor use on rough terrain. I'm not gonna just try to use this on gravel and then be like, whoa, why didn't it work? So without further ado, let's jump into it. What you get out of the box, the official Nerf Dart Rover versus the Shellington Labs Dart Sweeper. Let's remind ourselves what the Dart Rover gave us for $30. This, all this, that's it. Now you can see that the handle on this one was a pretty fixed length. You can only go uh, that long. Settings on the back were something that you could adjust while in use. You could also uh, take the handle off uh, once. And then the basket on the back of the netting is um, pretty small, but I guess you could get yourself like 50 darts in there, or was it 30? The two wheels here rotate nice and freely, allegedly, when they work. And these teeth are meant to grab your darts and sweep them back into this little basket. And these two blue guards on the front are meant to stop the darts from getting run over by the wheels, but more importantly, funnel the darts into the actual sweeper. And they do, uh, uh, they, they try. They sure, in fact, try. But okay, refresher course concluded. What do you get with the Shellington Labs dart sweeper? Well, this, and a couple little spare rubber bands. I'll measure the actual length and put it on screen right now, but you can see that you can actually disassemble this, making it a little bit easier to transport with if you want to have a nice and compact system, uh, and then you can kind of set it to a few different heights. These pieces are, uh, they're, they're okay. Like when you're assembling this thing, you just put them together and then you hit the button and then try not to pinch your finger and they snap in place. When taking it apart, I can notice a little bit of, uh, flaking going on. I can see it down the barrel as well. So not the highest quality material, but when they are fully assembled, it's not like I'm cutting my hands on anything. So the actual uh, pull 
the, the stem, the, the, what do you call this? The broom handle material, it works, right? And then the handle itself, this piece at the very top is, is totally fine. And then you just put your bottom piece in here like so. And then you can see a little hole there when you line it up perfectly when you do, and you can just take it out if you need to. This unit itself is relatively compact. It's a similar size to the Dart Rover, maybe with a slightly larger capacity in the back. You can see on the back, you've also got, I guess that you could call those instructions. Shellington Labs, push to eat, shake to filter, tilt to dump. There you go, that's all you need to know. The Shellington Dart Sweeper works very similar to the Dart Rover, but obviously these are not teeth. Three sets of bristles that as you are to rotate, you can see, they will filter the darts back into the compartment, ideally not actually chomping your darts at any given time. These two guards are the super wide guards that I also purchased. Technically, you're supposed to put a rubber band here and connect it to this screw, which I, I guess you'd unscrew a little bit and then you'd connect them so it actually stays down while you're sweeping and doesn't come up and then the darts will go underneath. So that's my bad on testing purposes, but trust me, it didn't actually impact too much of my testing. And one of my favorite features of the dart sweeper that is not present on the original dart rover is this little wheel on the bottom. This rotates freely, but that means that you can go around sweeping or you can tilt it back onto that wheel and wheel it around to either reposition yourself or just move it to a new spot and then you put it down flush and you start sweeping. You can also get some other add-ons to the dart sweeper from Shellington Labs. Googly eyes are also available if you want some extra goofiness. I do not have those on mine, sorry. There are also some smaller guards, which are $5 versus the super wide guards, which I have, which are 10. You can get some spoked wheels, which say they're great for turf and carpets for an extra $10. I don't have those. Or you can get a little nameplate that says nom 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 for another $5. And you can also get this in a mixture of unknown colors. I just opted for the same blue and gray color scheme that's shown on the website. So let's get testing. So here is our idealized testing surface. Indoors, low shag carpet, freshly vacuumed. What the dog doing? We've got a full plate to try out today. We've got our half darts. We've got Mega XL. We've got Mega. We've got Demolisher rockets. We've got regular darts too. I'm not gonna bring out like every flavor of full length dart out there. And then of course we've got some shells. I don't have any fly point shells, but I do have some firefly shells, but we don't need to test those because obviously if it can pick up these, if it can pick up those darts, it's gonna pick up those smaller shells for a single half dart. Right, so the dart rover doesn't wanna to work today, I guess. I thought this was one of the perfect conditions for it. Why are you fighting me? It's literally not moving. I hate you. So the uh, dart rover has decided to call it quits for today. And maybe there really is a variance between the original one that I got and the one I have now. That's kind of hilarious and also the worst thing ever. So on a smooth surface, the Dart Rover has some use case, sure. And of course, with Elite Darts, if you go at the right speed, it will put them into the back compartment. Uh, but even then, yike, yike. How beautiful. How to damage darts 101. I'm also convinced that this Dart Rover is just inferior than my previous one, which is a wild claim to make. But I'm pretty sure at this point, I have evidence to prove that. So I'm gonna recommend for the original testing of my original Dart Rover indoors, go check out the previous video I made because it actually worked on carpet and this one doesn't. And this one clearly is a piece of junk. Luca, I need to sweep that. You menace. Hey, hey. So aside from the one that my dog just ran off with, yes, the dart sweeper picking up elite darts, very effective. Now while they are all clumped like this, let's see how well it does with a big pile of darts. I uh, got a lot of them. If you do find yourself missing some of those darts, I don't have to turn around, I can just roll it back on this back wheel. I can sweep, 
and I can pull it back. I think that was a really nice addition to the design. So with Elite Darts, it works pretty darn well. Let's cut them in half. No real surprise, half darts works pretty darn well. Let's do combo mega and ultra, scaling up in size. Nice. There we go. Oh, it rejected one. Oh, wait, no, that did pull through. Oh, look at that. That worked really well. I figured it would do fine if they were like this, but it seemed like it would accept them no matter what the orientation was, which is pretty good. If you look in there, you can see as we're getting higher on capacity, some of them are kind of in those little teeth back there, but that's also just speaking to the limited capacity when it comes to larger ammo. So picking up a few mega rounds or a bunch of ultra rounds should be no issue, which is fantastic, but all right, next level up. Mega XL. So it is slowly rotating the dart, even if you do feed it in, in the improper orientation. Oh, but we're really quickly hitting the limits. You can kind of fit 10, it's not gonna work. So basically after five, this thing is going to be too full. So if you're picking up like onesie twosie Mega XL, that should work okay. But the main point is you have Mega XL, you have Dart Sweeper, it just picked up three, real easy. Approved. And okay, this is the last size up we're going to try. I have one demolisher rocket out. I'm not testing more than that because I don't think this is going to be successful. I was so wrong. Now, if I come straight on, will it like that? Oh, oh no, it does not like that at all. The more we try to force this one, the more we risk damaging the fins because these things are notoriously delicate. But if we attack it from the right direction, we can in fact sweep up a demolisher rocket. I would also recommend picking these up by hand. Still, success. But now we throw ourselves into the world of shell-fed blasters. Let's get to work. Much different noise when you're picking up shells. This is really cool. Look how it sorted it. I didn't touch that at all. This is how it wanted to start sorting the uh, shells once it got into the back. Shellington makes the Spring Thunder and they make the Dart Sweeper. If they weren't compatible, that would be uh, interesting. Let's clean that up. That worked really, really well. And there you can see it's a little less organized this time, but they're all picked up. You may not like it, but this is what hell looks like. So much. What are you doing? Oh my gosh, he's got a dart. Thank you. We've got every flavor of dart and shell on the ground. We're gonna obviously have to take a few passes with the dart sweeper, but here we go. Aside from uh, this one, which can't imagine what happened to that. The dart sweeper had some challenges, of course, with that much ammo on the ground. Once we filtered out some of the Mega XL that was really causing the uh, traffic jams in these bristles, it actually went all right. So let's try that again with a little less. So I said before that the Mega XL wasn't getting chewed up by the dart sweeper, and that was true until we really pushed the limits of how much the dart sweeper could hold. So I'm not gonna call this the normal test case condition, but that's why I'm going to recommend not trying to sweep Mega XL if you can avoid it. Still a little concentrated. Hey, 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 little goblin, come back. Hey, hey, hey. Success. Ironically, my dog is doing just as much damage to these darts as the dart sweeper itself, which is to say, not much. You just gotta watch out. You obviously can't carry too much ammo in this little back compartment and keep sweeping for too long, you do need to kind of empty this 
relatively quickly if you want to keep using it effectively. As far as the ideal test case, indoor on carpet, pretty successful. Good job, Dart Sweeper. You, on the other hand. To answer your question, yes, I did totally forget about Rival. I literally forgot to bring it out and it spaced my mind until now. Hey, let's pretend that didn't happen. Here's a big surprise. You won't believe what happens next. Wow, the Dart Sweeper can pick up Rival with relative ease. I've run into a capacity problem, but there you go. On a smoother surface, it's going to run away a bit more easily. That's what I've found testing in a different location. On carpet, it holds it a little bit better, so you can, in fact, sweep. You can pick it up pretty well. To further define some of the questions about capacity from the dart sweeper, I found that if I was just loading an individual ammo type, I could fit about 50 full length darts in the back before they'd start to spill out into the front, and then it was about 100 half length darts, about 60 rival rounds, so if you're moving this at all, rival inevitably wants to hop out where it can, and I found you could fit about 10 hands in here before things would also get arrived. I've enjoyed testing the dart sweeper, and I know other people have enjoyed testing it too. That's been one of my favorite things, is to hand this off to other people at games and see if they've been effective at dart sweeping. And ultimately, it seems like they have. But I have some problems with this design, and they're not minor. This dart sweeper from Shellington Labs is exclusively available from Shellington Labs like pre-assembled. I received mine in a box and was pretty much all good to go. I just had to, you know, put the handle together. And in fact, here's the uh, box that I received it in. There's no bubble wrap in there. I don't know if this was a one-off decision and if it's something I need to complain about, but I'm going to. This was very poorly packaged. This material did not insulate my dart sweeper very well. And in fact, my very first wheel, I noticed it had some cracks. It showed up with a crack right there, another one right here before I even used it. Oh, that's right, and there was one right here as well. So I did ask Shellington Labs for a replacement wheel because it appeared to be damaged in shipping and they did, thankfully, send one to me. Much appreciated. There's one thing though that did not change when I got my replacement wheel, the print quality. If you watched my Spring Thunder review video four years ago, it's the same kind of quality. I think it's unacceptable that this is the quality of prints going out for the price I paid. I hate to say it like that, but it's true. And I'm obviously not an expert when it comes to 3D printing. I'm willing to accept certain limitations and I'm not looking for the highest quality ever, but also I am not blind and I know an imperfection when I see one. And more importantly, I know that imperfections like this will lead to more problems down the line, or more likely, an easier time getting broken. Because it doesn't feel like these parts have a lot of material in them. In fact, some are already flaking off. I mean, it's just really obvious. It's rough, like my Spring Thunder, again, which was four years ago. I would have hoped to see some improvement since that time. What I'm seeing is the exact same thing, which is really unfortunate. You can't print the files yourself, you have to order the entire thing. Therefore, I have to talk about the product as it is, because this is rolling around on the ground, and I don't have the utmost confidence that this is going to survive for a long time. Also, if that does happen, can I get another replacement wheel if mine breaks? Or did I already exhaust my goodwill by asking for one just off of transit? And while the design seems to work pretty well, I'm still a little uncertain of some of the decisions. Like, obviously these bristles do a pretty good job of sweeping and capturing everything in its path. You can also see that they get pretty dirty. That's a lot of hair. Thank you, dog. Maybe that's the cost of functionality, but you can also see it's starting to kind of come apart. I've had to pull bristles out of this before. It's not just hair. Some of the bristles are coming off. You can also see like these screws are just poking out. Like are, are those supposed to be flush? That one's lower. That one's lower. That one's really far out. I tried to tighten that one a little bit, but what's it, what's it doing there? Is this a finished design? Did you use the wrong screws for this thing too? I mean, it doesn't seem to be impacting the darts that you sweep up, but like, what, what is that? What's going on here? And if I can turn your attention to the wheels again, I have another gripe to go over. Yeah, the, the wheel. You can see these are like O-rings on the wheels intermittently to give it good traction. You can also see that some appear to be missing. Brett, what happened there? Uh, use case, that's what happened. I used this on hardwood floor and after, you know, just some movement around, they pop off. 
and they disappear, never be found again. I think I did get some replacements in my bag, and um, well, I already replaced them and they're already gone again. Oh, that's right, I have, I guess I have some more from this previous wheel. Thank you. I'm not convinced this was the best way to solve that problem of getting traction on your 3D printed part. O-rings are probably cheap. That's my only interpretation here, unfortunately. And uh, you know what's kind of unfortunate is just how thin this wheel is. Can you even see that with the... Allow me to reintroduce to you the very janky Dart Rover and its massive treaded wheels. This doesn't mean that the Dart Rover is better. We've obviously proven that's not true, but I am just really worried that these things are not gonna survive very long. I don't think it takes too much imagination on someone misusing this one, hitting a corner, and boom, your wheel's gone. Inside isn't too much better. You can see the rubber bands in there as well. Same ones from this little bag right here. It just seems really delicate. You have to have this on the ground. Your intent is to use this to sweep material off the ground, which is probably the most unforgiving surface, even in its ideal case. The more creaking that comes from it, it feels like there are parts that are being stressed beyond their breaking point, and I'm only gonna find that out when I'm actually using it at my next game. I think this unfortunately, is the example of when people see 3D printed parts are not good for uh, longevity, reliability, this is what comes to mind. In my time bringing the Dart Sweeper to multiple events, I've had the chance to see how others respond to it. The folks that I've shown off the Dart Sweeper to, whether I'm using it or I then hand it off to them so they can use it, it's pretty mixed. And I don't think that's too surprising because some people, they just see a tool and they go off and use it while other people really scrutinize it before even trying to use it out. But from those opinions, I can also better inform my critiques at this time. Let's talk about the wheels again. So it seems pretty clear to me now that the O-rings were chosen as a cheaper alternative, but at the very least, you could have closed the O-rings in from both sides so they didn't pop out. I don't fully understand why the wheels were designed as they were now because it really does feel like the wheel was reinvented. Why not just get like rubber tires from, I don't know, Harbor Freight? Like, yes, I understand that there's probably going to be a cost associated, but I don't think it's unfair to say that the wheels on the Dart Sweeper are a make or break for it working. The 3D printed third wheel on the bottom is okay. I don't have an issue with that being printed, but it's also spinning around a screw with threads. Why? Some more overall feedback as well for this thing. Yes, the screws are directly screwed into printed parts, so maybe some brass inserts or hex nuts could help that not be the case, just for the longevity of the design. Maybe consider replacing the rubber bands with, I don't know, paracord? Just especially the exposed ones, they don't look very good. I would also consider offering additional handle segments for those who want the dart sweeper to be even taller. I would definitely consider increasing the sweeping capacity with a larger collection bucket. I don't know why this particular size was chosen. Maybe it does have to do with the size of those spring thunder shells since they fit in perfectly. And of course, everyone has offered their thoughts on the quality of the 3D printed parts and their thickness in many areas. I don't know how many times I have to say that out loud, but that really is the ultimate make or break for this product. You don't wanna use different wheels to give it a little bit more thickness, okay, but these wheels, they're too thin. Some of the parts in the back here are too thin and strangely, like what? Flexi flexi? Do I recommend the Dart Sweeper from Shellington Labs? I cannot fully recommend it. However, if you've liked what you've seen so far, you don't think the uh, print quality is an issue, you don't worry about some of the design uh, questions I've pointed out, then by all means, go and buy it. I have obviously had success with it and I'm sure you'll have success too. This is a great proof of concept. This is a great first attempt. I think there is definitely room for improvement and I think there is going to be an excellent product here in the future. But until that time, I will continue using this. Of course, why, why wouldn't I? It's not like I tried this once and I'm like, nah, got bored, not gonna use the Dart Sweeper anymore. I think there are plenty of clubs that can benefit from something like this. And the investment as far as like $80 plus add-ons and then shipping is, is not a terrible price. But I think that price would make more sense if it got a little bit more refined. Hopefully this has given you an in-depth look at the Dart Sweeper from Shellington Labs. I will of course link it in the description box below that is directly to their website where they are selling it. I hope the folks over at Shellington Labs can hear and see some of the feedback from this video and just from others in general and improve upon their design. 
And if they don't, well, that's fine. It's their product. Like I said, I will continue to use this. And if something catastrophic does happen, I will let you know. But until that time, thank you everyone so much for watching. Subscribe for more dart sweeping, and I will see you later.